You ready? Yeah. Okay, let's go. Okay, cool. So uh, we already had some sports talks, so I would like to introduce you to my favorite sport, which is uh, pipe bowling, which is basically, as you can see in the picture, is um, getting dragged over water um, with a big kite. And um, I didn't start it actually until I was in Australia. I'm actually coming from a sailing background. So back in Germany, I was used to doing um, small catamarans and small yachts. Uh, we would actually do like three weeks trip from sailing from Germany to Norway and back. And like live um, three to four weeks on a boat, which is, uh, was pretty fun. Um, but then I came to Melbourne. And uh, my first semester when I started studying in Melbourne in 2006, I went down to, so this is actually a picture from St. Hilda Beach. And um, there's on a good weekend, there are probably up to 80 to 90 kite waters um, out there. And I look and they look like they're pretty much fun, so I wanted to start. So I got my kite, my board, and th this is the bow, how you steer the kite. And this is the harness, how you hook yourself uh, into the bow. So you see here, which what we call the, the loop, the chicken loop. And um, yeah, so, and you can have like three different kinds of kites. So this is like a foil, or we can always sometimes call it the mattress, which is for old people because it's very slow, very <laughs> slow um, This is a C-shaped kite, which uh, usually the guys who do uh, massive jumps to use, and the other one was a bow shape, which um, is what I'm flying. So this is a, a quick tour theory. So if the wind is coming from the front on words, and you're on the beach, you can only ride this way. So you go up, down, up, down. Or if you're proficient, you can go more down, more down, more down. So, and of course you need some wind before you can go out. So you want to um, check your wind meter. So usually you have websites where you can check that. So you get a seven day forecast to plan your weekend. And then on the day, you basically wait and look at the timeline and refresh the page every 10 minutes until you go. So when you can finally go, um, you can't usually start your kite on your own. So usually you would have a person standing here grabbing the kite from the front and help you launching the kite. Because like, it's very far away. The lines are usually um, 20 plus meters, which means also you need a lot of space. So you don't want to be on the boat. So once you're out, um, like if you're a beginner, all you want to do is just kite. So, um, so you see like now the wind come, comes basically from there and he's going this way and you have the kite, what we call here in a uh, three o'clock, two o'clock position. But once you're getting more proficient, you want to start to jump. So this is what we call a hook jump because you're still hooked uh, in your harness and this is kind of a small jump only. So what you actually basically do is like you, you bring your kite from one side to the other side and that gives you automatically a lift up into the air. Once you're a little bit more proficient, you can do what we call a kite loop, where you just not bring your kite from one side to the other, but you keep it looping one time around, which gives you more lift up. So you see here, it's like a much bigger jump than the other one. So once you manage that, you can start unhooked. So you see, the bar is only connected to the safety leash. So usually, the chicken loop would be here in the hook. And um, so there's, there's a reason why you want to unhook, and you see it in the next picture. So what you can actually do is then, so you start from here, you jump up, you can actually spin and pass the bar around your back and up to the front again, and then land. So you see like here, it's like in this picture, you can see that it's actually not attached and it's just a safety loop. So let's say you crash, then you still get your kite back by just pulling it to safety. And um, there's another version of kite boarding, which is getting more and more popular, is uh, going into the waves and have a very small surfboard. So, which, which gives you, um, like as a surfer, you can only ride the waves so much and have to pedal back out again. But with the kite, you can just like, you know, go back with the waves. Um, this is a picture of my first kite, also in St. Um, it's 
actually broken now, so I already replaced it. And it broke it twice, so it actually ripped it apart after a crash. And uh, what, so this is like an unhook jump from one of the best kiters. I think it's uh, filmed in Cape Town, South Africa. So yeah, you can basically get jumps for four to five meters. Here's like a small unhook jump thing. Now you can see unhook jumps. So also there you saw the kite like oh, once moving oh, around. <laughs> yeah, and there's a crash. Yeah. So you actually like you know let the bar go. So how dangerous is it? Yes, it can be dangerous. It's probably as dangerous as ice hockey or something else. Um, there have been deaths by um, people just launching the kite incorrectly on the beach and crashing into a wall. Um, and also, you can get a lot of speed. So on flat models like the one before, you can get um, good kiters, good wind conditions, 90 kilometers per hour. So this is like a picture of the more populated, um, populated uh, wave riding. So yeah, just kind of a mix. Uh, I haven't tried that out yet. Um, yeah, so that also already brings me to the end of my presentation. Um, so I'm doing it roughly for three years now. Like I'm, I'm getting into my fourth season. I'm very excited to get back in November because that's when the summer season starts and it lasts until end of April. So pretty excited to get back.